is to journey up into what we call the Stormland, which is this sort of ethereal place. You can see it on the screen right now, where you can do what we call slipstreaming across the clouds in this uh, interesting version of flying. Uh, and what's, what I really love about uh, developing this game is anything you can see, you can climb, you can traverse. And our goal with this game was, as Jason's saying, to go bigger, to actually really open things up for VR players and present a game that's not just taking place in, a, say, a small environment, but that challenges you in terms of traversal, in terms of combat, in terms of uh, what you're scavenging out in the environment. And there's a, there's a story that goes along with it. It's got cooperative play as well. Uh, but uh, just going back to what Jason was saying about how VR is evolving, we've learned a lot uh, in terms of how to design for the VR audience with our first three titles. Right. And it's, it's coming through in what we can do now for the platform. And I remember uh, when I first came to Insomniac to talk about VR, you said, I've got the perfect game for VR. I was like, okay, show me. And this was already, a, Starline was already a prototype, right? There already existed. Uh, there was not a robot hero, if I remember correctly. Right. But the cloudscape, the islands, the things that we're seeing uh, in this video mostly existed, and that would have been three years ago or more. Yeah. And I think I remember saying, this is awesome. Way too big for the first generation of VR. It's going to take you too long. It's going to be too, too cumbersome. You don't know how traversal should work yet. We're just learning how locomotion and picking something up and you know, all of these things in VR are going to work. And here we are now three some odd years later, and here it is, right? Well, yeah, you're right. And we didn't know how traversal worked. I think that when we began diving in, we assumed that we could design games the same way we've been designing them for the last almost 25 years. Uh, we figured level layouts would be the same, we figured gunplay would be the same, and it, it totally isn't. If you guys, I'm assuming some of you in this audience are VR players, you know that when you're moving around, things are different. Your head is the camera, right? It's not, we can't move the camera for you. And those are just so simple things that we, we had to learn to walk before we could run, I guess, is sort of the analogy. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, from Edge of Nowhere, your first title, which was uh, a character action game, that we had to figure out how to get that to work without having the camera fly all over the place. Third person, uh, to fear of rights, uh, and then on to, right, which is, was our next step. Then on to Unspoken, which was the first first person thing you had done in VR, but we made a very big decision there not to locomote, remember, right. to warp around, because we weren't confident that we could get locomotion to work comfortably uh, and easily, and now you're climbing mountains and jumping all over the place, and everything's just kind of working, and, there are all these tricks that we're pulling to make it comfortable for people to do that. Uh, it's amazing how far we've come in really three short years, right? And I think a lot of that does have to do with uh, more adoption of VR and more acclimatization of players who have been in games that are experimenting with how traversal locomotion should work. And that's pretty exciting. I mean, very, very rarely, I think, do developers get to be on the ground floor of new tech, sort of a new design paradigm. And I know at Insomniac, that's been awesome. Yeah. Because we've been designing console games for so long, and now to have something that's that's totally different, that makes us think orthogonally, is inspiring. Well, yeah, when we, when we were doing, when I was doing Crash, you were doing Spyro, which is now 20 plus years ago. Uh, our hair was less gray, and we were figuring out how to make character action work in 3D, and every single step we took, was difficult because we had only Mario and Sonic and Donkey Kong Country. You know, name your favorite 2D side-scrolling game. None of that translated into going into the screen. Um, and if we felt young and alive, right? Yeah. And then we got better and better and better and better and better, better. And at this point, it's like we're still progressing in those games, but it's much easier to know where the next step is because we've had 20 years of development. Along comes VR. We have gray hair now, but I feel like a kid. Because again, everything is up in the air, and all the rules we thought make sense, or all of a sudden, we just have to throw them out and start over. That's true, and I, I think now that we've gotten past the basic rules, we've un we understand better how to make uh, basic gameplay work, whether it's combat or puzzle solving, we can start to layer in all of those other design elements that we think are important for games. For example, in Stormland, we actually have a procedural system that's regenerating this, the, the Stormland every week. So the idea is that you as a player are going back over and over again to experience something completely different 
to find new challenges. Uh, and you're assigned, part of the challenges is are that you're assigned these bounties to go up into the Stormland and work with friends to take them on every week. So this is a game that keeps, keeps going. But again, that was way too ambitious for us to even think about during the first few years of VR. Yeah, getting multiplayer right. In fact, is, well, let's start on some questions. And this one came up in my Twitter feed, so I'll just give it to you so we can answer it more publicly. Uh, how does that work, single player, multiplayer, and Stormland? Like, it, there are people that say, uh, is it only a multiplayer game? I like single player games. Other people are like, is it only, it is only single player? I like multiplayer games. So how, what is the operation of that? It's, it's both. So you, we know that there are players who prefer to experience adventures on their own. And we absolutely do tune the game for that if you decide to move through the Stormland um, solo. But if you take on uh, if you have a friend join you, the challenges become more difficult, and the loot you can earn is better, and you have to cooperate. What's interesting, too, about playing with a friend is this idea that in VR, it is, it's your friend. The way that he or she moves is very specific to the person, unlike an avatar you might see in a regular console game, where it's all generated based on what the animators came up with. I'm looking at Jason and seeing his head move the way I know it moves, or his hands, because he's holding touch controllers. And it imparts a personality that really is distinct for every single player. Yeah, that, that's been an amazing experience for me, watching uh, people that I know get into the headset, and without them saying 